Okay, we're back here looking at the most historically significant Shelby Mustang ever created. We've done a couple other videos on this car. We're with our friend Jim Wicks who has a knowledge of Shelby's and Cobras and Mustangs that is second to, I don't think anybody. I don't think I've ever uh, asked you a, yeah. a Mustang or Shelby question that you just haven't spit the answer out. So it's super cool getting to talk to Jim and he's gonna share some more facts about this, the prototype 1965 GT350R race car that is basically the reason we have Shelby Mustangs today, because of the success of this particular car. So Jim's gonna share some more stories about the development and his knowledge of this car with us. Carol needed a project engineer as they went on shifting gears from being in the Cobra world to getting into the Mustang world. So uh, between Shelby and Ford, uh, uh, he hired a fella out of Michigan by the name of Chuck Cantwell, who was the, became the project engineer on the GT350. And Chuck th took this car through the entire developmental stage of assessing the pieces and parts to go on this car, as well as being the test driver, and even drove the car in a couple of races and won a race in. Now, was Car Carol Shelby was not interested in Mustang, was he? Carol didn't have sport. time for Mustangs. He was too busy. Carol had with more on his plate than he could stand because Ford had basically pushed him into the GT40 program uh, at the same time. At, the, at, the, at literally the same time. And then they came in and said, "Oh, why don't you do something with our Mustang too?" Yes, exactly. And it was like, "You want me to do what?" <laughs> so, so, so Carol uh, had to go get some help. Yes, so he, he had to get help, and uh, through some of the. You know, the people at Ford also helped him, but uh, they had no clue of what to do. So he had to, to bring the right people together to the team. And that's something about Carroll Shelby that I've always felt. If Carroll Shelby would have been a sports coach, he'd have won the national championship every year because he knew how to bring the right people to the playing field. He got the people that understood what he wanted and how to do things and could do them better than he could. Which which is what a good leader does. Yes, because exactly. not everybody can do everything right. It's no, impossible. No. It's, it's leadership and, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, the way that they did things at, at, at Shelby American, a lot of times very off the cuff, not at all in the corporate mode <laughs> of business. So, uh, you know, Carol was all about that. So, that so they didn't those, do with a lot of red tape there. That let those guys do things under their pretense and have fun doing it. Right. So he brought this guy in to develop these cars. Yes, and Chuck took the car. Again, he was involved every day, hands-on. Any change they made, uh, he would share time with with, uh, with Ken Miles. I mean, Bob Bondurant drove this car in testing. Uh, uh, Jerry Titus who drove this car in some testing. Uh, it was a it was, it was a team effort to bring this car to where it needed to be. You know, without a doubt, without the significance of having uh, uh, Chuck Cantwell do this, uh, uh, it would have been a much harder task. So, there again, that's some of the super cool stuff that we get by by getting to know a guy like Jim and being able to hang out with a guy like Jim. So that gives us the opportunity to bring some of that to you. It's so cool when a guy like Jim, Jim shares his knowledge with us about these cars and what we can learn. So, super excited about it. Thanks for being here. Anything else you got that you wanted to add about that? or? Hey, we're having a great time at the Mecham Auction. I hope everybody will come out and join us. Looking forward to it. We're going to go back and check out a lot more cool stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. We'll see you soon.